So today I want to talk about Ohm's Law. Now what is Ohm's Law? Well, in electrical circuits, it's the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Now before I get too far and talk about Ohm's Law, I'd like to talk about these three elements in circuits to make them a little more understandable for a first timer that's trying to understand how a circuit works. Now the best analogy to think about these three items is to look at them in terms of like water going through a hose. So let me like draw a hose here. Now when we look at voltage, we think about you know the water pressure, which is the force that pushes the water through the line. Now when we look at something like current, well we're looking at the water flow, the actual movement of the water through the hose we would consider to be the current. So the water pressure, the force that pushes the water through, we can consider the voltage. The actual flow or the movement of the water we can call the current. Now, if we wanted to look at something like resistance, well, let's say we made this hose smaller here toward the end. Well, now what we've done, by shrinking the size of the hose, now this water flow is now restricted. It can't move as much water through here at the same rate as it did in this section. So what we say over here is that this area has been restricted. So this is, you may hear some plumbers say that a person's got restricted water flow in their lines or something due to a blockage. Well, this is kind of what that's talking about. This is more restrictive than this. So again, water pressure, the force that pushes the water through is what we consider to look like voltage. The flow going through this hose is what we would look at as the current. And then resistance would be if we had a smaller diameter hose versus a larger diameter hose. A larger hose, the water flows through much more easily. A smaller hose, the water does not flow easily. So that's the way to look at resistance. So now that we've kind of covered using water as an example to show how a basic circuit works, now we can start talking about Ohm's Law a little bit more. Because a basic circuit, well, let's draw a basic circuit here. There's three things in your typical circuit. Usually you have something called a voltage source. And this is anything like a battery, for instance, is considered a voltage source because your AA batteries that you get for a lot of your electronics, they're usually one and a half volts. And then you can connect them up in series inside devices, and of course that ups the voltage for whatever that device needs. So for instance, like I say, your AA batteries, 1.5 volts. So this would be your first element of your circuit V up here. This would be your voltage source. And we usually name voltage sources, we just call them V, and then however many number of them, we just give them a designation in case this in case it would be V1. And then in the other second part of the circuit is you'll have wires that connect the devices to the voltage source. And the wires are what carry the current, just kind of like the water hose carries the water, well, wires carry the current coming from your source through your load. And then the third part is our resistance. And in this case, we have something called a resistor. And we just label it R1. In a way, in a circuit, you have a source and you have a sink. The source is what provides the current. The sink is what absorbs that current. And again, We'll also give signs to these because by giving these signs we're designating the way the current flows but also the way electrons flow. Now electrons are negatively charged particles and they're always attracted to positive particles. So your electron flow will always go in this direction 
they will always go from the negative sign out of your source through the load back to the positive. Now in a circuit we generally look at current as flowing this way. So when you're looking at current, current is usually measured from the positive to the negative. So current from positive to negative, if you're looking at the electron flow, you're going from negative to positive. Now, how does Ohm's law apply to this circuit? Well, again, Ohm's law is a relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And in this case, I've given this voltage source here, you know, a voltage. I've given it one and a half volts. Now, I haven't given anything to my resistance, so let's say I will give it two ohms. And this is why it's called Ohm's Law, because it's named after the guy that came up with the law. And so anything that has a resistance, we call it, we say that it has a, an ohm value. And however many ohms de determines how much resistance that device has. So this resistor, I'm giving it a resistance of two ohms. Now, we're not looking for voltage in this circuit. What we want to find is I, because we want to find the current in this circuit. So we can rearrange Ohm's law to look for that, because right now it's set up to be looking at voltage. So let's rewrite that, because we want to look for current. So we're looking for I. And then it's voltage over resistance. Now, say you wanted to look for the resistance of this resistor. If we knew the voltage and the current, we could rewrite it to look for the resistance, in which case it would be V over I, the voltage over the current. Okay, so let's apply Ohm's law to this circuit, see what kind of current we would expect from it. So we have a one and a half volt source, and we have two ohms. So we go over here, we get I, we have one and a half volts, we have two ohms, so then our current should be 0 0.75 amps. In this case, we can also rewrite that as 750 <laughs> milliamps. Again, when you're doing a lot of circuits classes and stuff, you're generally going to be measuring your current a lot in milliamps. Uh, unless you're dealing with devices that have a high current draw or something, you're generally not going to be writing these in amps or even kiloamps or megaamps. You're generally going to be measuring circuits like these using milliamps, possibly even smaller stuff like microamps or nanoamps. But that's how Ohm's law works. It's just the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And I we showed a generic circuit here and applied Ohm's law to it to find the current here, which of course we found to be 0 0.75 amps. And of course we got our voltage and resistance determined. So let's apply this to an actual circuit. So here I've got the snap circuits that I showed in a video earlier about its unboxing and whatnot. And I've set up a generic circuit here, very similar to the one that I drew on the paper here. The only difference is, is I've added a switch. And a switch allows me to basically close or open the circuit. A closed circuit means the current can flow through it. When it's an open circuit, it means there's a break in it somewhere and the current cannot flow. This is basically how your light switch in your house works when you want to turn on the light or something. You flip up the switch, you close the circuit, the current can flow and the light comes on. You turn that switch off, you break the circuit, now it's an open circuit and the light turns off. So, what I need to do first is I need to take a meter and I want to measure the battery voltage and I want to measure the actual resistance through this resistor. Now it's labeled as 100 ohms, but never believe the actual resistance of the resistor. You always want to check it with a meter. When you're going to be doing your labs in your circuits class, you will always be checking 
the resistance of your resistors and other devices with your meter before you ever do any calculations because you will not get a perfect 100 ohm resistor or anything like that. It will usually be maybe an ohm or two off. So we find a meter here. Uh, we have a standard digital multimeter. Connect up some test leads. And I'm going to set this in the 200 ohm mode, since that's about what I'm looking for. Connect this to the terminals here. And there, and there is our actual resistance measurement. And according to the meter, it's showing it to be about 101.8 ohms. So 101.8 ohms is what we're going to use in our calculations. Now I'm going to look at our battery voltage. Connect it to the terminals here. And this says my battery voltage is 3.08 volts. Because I've got two 1.5 volt batteries connected in series in here, so the voltage is doubled. So it gives me approximately 3.07, 3.08. So I'm going to apply Ohm's law to it, and then we're going to check this with the meter, measuring the current, and see if it holds up. Now I find my calculator. Ugh. Turn the calculator on here. So we measured approximately 3.07 volts. Again, I'm looking for current, so I'm using this version of Ohm's law, I equals V over R. So we've got our voltage, 3.07 volts. We're going to divide that by the resistance we were getting was 101.8. And that gives me 0 0.030 amps, which in this case would be equivalent to 30 milliamps. So when I turn this circuit on and current starts flowing, I should find 30 milliamps of current going through the circuit. So let's do that. Now I could turn the circuit on right now, but you can't see anything, but there is current flowing through there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the meter in series here. I'm going to take the switch, the resistor, I'm going to take my leads, and connect this meter up. And what I'm doing with the meter here is I'm connecting it up as something called an ammeter. An ammeter is connected up in series in the circuit, which means in line between the devices. And this allows me to measure current going through a part of the circuit. So let me turn the meter on and set it to the right mode here. Let it get down to zero because the meter has got its own general resistance. Okay, it shows zero. So again, the switch is in the off position. There's no current flowing in this circuit. Now I'm going to move the switch to the on position and we should see a current reading show up here on the meter. Turn the switch on. And there we go. Now it's showing that there is current in the circuit. And as the meter shows, it's 0 0.03, that's 30 milliamps. That's just like our reading that we got on the calculator. So Ohm's law is correct here, and we did apply it correctly to the circuit. So that's how Ohm's law works. I turn the switch off, and now there's no current flowing. So that was a practical application of Ohm's Law, and again, I showed you on the paper how it is, the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, and that's one of the most fundamental principles in all uh, circuits and electricity and whatnot.